Friends, we may finally know who invented the wheel and how they did it. What scientists just discovered gives us an exciting insight into human innovation about 6,000 years ago. It wasn't for chariots, it wasn't for wagons, it wasn't for any of the reasons many have imagined. Instead, it started here, underground in copper mines with a challenge that would spark humanity's arguably greatest invention. And by using physics, artificial intelligence and archaeological evidence, it seems scientists have finally pieced together the real story. And what they found reveals something fascinating about innovation itself, a pattern that tells a story about how humans sometimes make their greatest breakthroughs. In the Carpathian Mountains of Eastern Europe, archaeologists discovered something very interesting. Over 150 clay vessels believed to have been drinking mugs, all shaped like four-wheeled wagons. Carbon dating reveals they're from around 3600 BC, which makes them the world's earliest known representations of wheeled transport. That alone indicates that the wheel could have been invented there, but there's more to it. These mugs show us how their minecarts looked at the peak of their development, basically large baskets with fixed wheels. But the researchers estimate this design was the result of about 500 years of gradual innovation, starting around 3900 BC. But to understand why the wheel first emerged here, we need to understand the problem these miners faced. Imagine you've traveled 6,000 years back in time to the Carpathian Mountains in Eastern Europe, half a mile underground. More specifically, a mine belonging to the Bolaraz culture in modern-day Slovakia or Hungary. Down here, you need to move tons of copper ore through tunnels barely wider than your shoulders. Like many ancient peoples, these miners tried using logs as rollers, but in a narrow mine tunnel, this created a fundamental problem. They had two equally bad options. Either place rollers along the entire path, which is virtually impossible in the long, downward-sloping mine tunnels, or constantly move the rollers from back to front. In a cramped tunnel barely wider than the load itself, moving rollers to the front meant lifting and carrying them through narrow spaces, requiring significant energy and effort. And to move the rollers around the carts, they would have had to dig wider tunnels. This meant more digging, more work, and a higher risk of collapse. So the miners needed a different approach. Their solution was to add sockets to the bottom of the containers, now the rollers could sit inside these sockets, moving with the load instead of being left behind. It was a trade-off. It introduced some friction where the roller met the socket, but it also eliminated the need to constantly move rollers around. In the confined space of a mine, this made a huge difference. But the innovation didn't stop there. At some point, the miners noticed that adding grooves to the rollers was an even bigger improvement. Unlike smooth rollers that would quickly lose their lubricant to the ground, Grooved rollers could retain lubricant where they met the socket. Perhaps even more important, it also significantly reduced friction. As the miners slowly improved on their design, these grooves were made wider, eventually merging into one, creating a narrow middle section that worked like a modern axle. Thanks to the basic mechanical principle of leverage, an axle with one-tenth the diameter of the wheel requires only one-tenth of the pushing force. This made their backbreaking work ten times easier, especially over rough or uneven ground. What made the mine environment so perfect for this innovation were three things. First, the narrow tunnels forced miners to find better solutions than traditional rollers. Second, because mines were man-made, they could keep the passages straight, which was crucial because these early wheels couldn't turn very well. And third, Unlike on rough outdoor terrain, the controlled mine environment allowed miners to process the surfaces and use lubrication to reduce friction. To test this hypothesis of how the wheel evolved, so to speak, the researchers turned to computational physics. But instead of telling the computer what a wheel should look like, they asked a different question. What is the most efficient way to move heavy loads with minimal effort without undermining structural integrity? They started with a simple challenge. Take a solid cylinder of wood and find the shape that requires the least force to move a heavy load. The computer divided this cylinder into over a million tiny elements, each one able to be modified. Then something interesting happened. Through hundreds of iterations, the program began removing material where it wasn't needed, keeping it only where it provided strength or mechanical advantage. First grooves appeared on both sides, then these grooves deepened, and finally the centre narrowed, creating what we now recognise as an axle. This exact sequence mirrors what the researchers believe happened based on the available archaeological evidence and principles of mechanics. 
What took the computer hundreds of iterations to discover, those ancient miners figured out over hundreds of years through practical problem solving. Think about this. Every wheel you see today, from rovers exploring on Mars to the bicycle you learned to ride as a child, probably traces back to those miners solving a nearly impossible problem in the darkness beneath the Carpathian Mountains. Or does it? Do you buy this explanation? Let me know in the comments. And speaking of things we see every day without knowing their fascinating origin, did you know that those innocent garden gnomes in your neighbourhood have a surprisingly scandalous history? Click here to uncover another hidden story that might change how you look at everyday objects. Thank you for watching.